Okay, so, we are focusing on binary constraint networks and let us do a very quick recap of what we have done so far. We looked at this process of composition. of relations. So, I want to look at an example uh, today and also introduce this notion of something called a matching diagram. So, we have seen that there is one graphical way of representing a constraint network, which is that the constraint graph in the constraint graph, every node is a variable and every edge or two nodes have an edge between them if the two variables participate in the constraint. In a matching diagram, we look at also a graphical representation, but in this representation, we look at values as to which value is related to which value and it is quite a useful device to explain many of the algorithms that we will be looking at essentially. So, let me uh, take this example again or new example rather and we have this uh, binary constraint network between variables x, y and z and so I hope this does not cause a confusion the dual use of x one is a set of variables and one is a variable here and then to represent this binary constraint network using this thing we have these three variables. So, let us say this is x and this is y and this is z essentially and let us say there are three values a, b, c in x which means d x is equal to a b c and likewise you can define d y and d z, but I will just use the values here. So, let us say that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 values in d y. So, the d y is made up of these 4 values and let us say that a is related to 1 and b is related to 3 and b is related to 4 essentially. What does that mean? We can express that as r x y is equal to, I will just use the letters a 1 directly or we can write them as pairs a comma 1 though I was thinking of a shorter form b comma 3 and b comma And let us say Z has three values also A, B and C and let us say 1 is related to A, 2 is related to B and 4 is related to C. And let us say there is another value D which is not related to anyone here and another value D also which is not related to anyone here. Then we have R, Y, Z is equal to so, I will just use a shorter form now 1 a 2 b 4 c. Now, if you remember we had said that uh, the composition of these two relations which is r x z is the projection onto x z. So, this should be a set of the cross the, the join the natural join of x y comma r y z. So, what is the natural join here? The, the, the natural join part this part as you can see is that wherever they share a value. So, r x y has a 1 and r y z has 1 a. So, this will contain 
this pair A 1 and A and it will also contain the pair B 4 and C, this C is the upper case C I think because it comes from a different domain. And when you project it onto pi x z uh, on variables x and z, so that basically uh, what is x? So, this is x, y, z, right? These values are from these three domains. So, from this we want to take x and z, and what we get then is the relation a comma a and b comma c and this is the relation r x z so this is a composition relation and essentially what have we done we have inferred a new relation relation or you can say constraint because the relation and constraint are the same thing essentially right we had to we had a relation rxy then we had the relation ryz and we have inferred a new relation rxz essentially now you remember we had given an alternative definition of this which i will just start here but you can finish it so rxz is the set of all such pairs a comma b where a comma b are variables where a belongs to d x b belongs to d z and there exists a c where c belongs to d y and there is the relation which means a comma c belongs to r x y and c comma b belongs to r y z this is an alternate way of uh, defining the same relation so the first expression is from relational algebra the second expression is a more explicit uh, set based relation okay so this should be equal to here but you can also see that this new constraint is a path of length 2 and the path starts with the variable from x goes to the variable y and goes to the variable z. So, we have composed d r x y and r y z and we have found this thing and this is essentially a list of all paths of length 2 which go from x to z via y and you can see that in the above diagram that, that this is the one path that we have and this is the other path that we have. Then we had defined the notion of uh, equivalence, uh, uh, equivalent networks essentially. We had said that two networks are equivalent if they express the so same solution. So, if this original network that we are talking about in which there are two relations R x y and R y z, uh, we have now made this an equivalent to a, a new network in which there are three relations R x y, R y z and also R x z and the set of solutions for all these three are the same. In fact, for this particular network, uh, this is a set of solutions. And since both the networks express the same solution, we say that they are equivalent essentially. So, we had defined the notion of equivalent networks, we had defined the notion of tighter networks. So, tighter networks are those in which, which are more explicit in some sense, whose uh, relations are subsets of the of the less tighter network essentially and then we had defined the notion of a minimal network and that was the tightest possible network that you had over this thing now we also had discussed this result by montanari so let me just do that again before i define the projection network which is what we are interested in what he said was that given uh, n variables 
each having k values. He tried to compare the number of binary constraint networks you can have given n variables and k values and the number of arbitrary networks or CSPs that you can have and he showed that the number of arbitrary CSPs is much, much larger than uh, the number of binary constraint networks over this set of n variables and k values and which, which is to say that you that, that if you are trying to define a CSP over this then not every CSP can be defined using a binary constraint network. So, the general general thing was as follows is that you have these three these variables x 1, x 2, x 3, x n and from this you choose a value. So, one tuple would typically look like a 1 comma a 2 comma a 3 comma a n and each of these can be done in k ways. Each value you can choose from its domain in k ways because there are k values and therefore, so k into k into k into k raise to n. So, there are total of uh, k raise to n tuples possible. Right? And a subset of this k raise to n tuples defines a relation. So, so the number of relations relations or networks or constraints is essentially any subset of this k raise to n tuples essentially. And the number of subsets is uh, 2 raise to this value. So, the number of net relations is 2 raise to k raise to n. Now, if you are talking about binary constraint networks, then the important thing about binary constraint network is that, that every relation is a pair essentially. So, for every pair of variables or you can say for every edge, uh, because the binary constraint network naturally can be represented as a constraint graph, uh, there are k square tuples and then there are n square edges or pairs. So, the total number of pairs that you can have is k square n square and any subset of this is a binary constraint network. So, you have to again have 2 raise to k raise to n square and what Montanari pointed out was this value is much much larger than 2 raise to k raise to n. So, not every, so which means not every net relation and remember that we talked about relations as rho that is a solution relation that is a relation we are trying to express as a as a constraint network. So, not every relation row can be expressed as a binary constraint network essentially, but we can look for approximations. And the approximation that we are interested in is called a projection network. And the idea of a projection network is as follows that given a relation rho over some variables x. we can define 
a binary constraint network which is called P of rho, where P stands for the projection network, which is made up of a set of variables x, which is the original set of variables, a set of domains d and a set of constraints, let us call them P here, because these are binary constraint networks essentially. Now, here each d i is simply the projection over the variable i of rho essentially. So, basically what what participates in, in what is the domain, which are the values in the domain which participate in these constraints essentially. And each p i or p i j I should say, because it is a binary constraint network. So, every relation is a binary relation is a subset of pi i j rho, not a subset equal to, these are the constraints that are described by the binary constraint network. So, let me use an example. Uh, So, let us say x is equal to uh, variables x 1, x 2, x 3 and let us say my relation which I am writing as a table form is something like this uh, 1, 1, 2. So, you can infer the domains of these or we will do that in a moment or 1, 2, 2 or 2, 1, 3 or 2, 3, 1, 1, 3, 2. So, you can see that for this relation d x, let us call it d 1, which stands for x 1 is 1 comma 2, d 2 is 1 comma 2 comma 3 and d 3 is also 1 comma 2 comma 3. So, these are the domains and what are the relations? So, we want three relations here x 1, x 2, x 2, x 3 and x 1, x 3. So, R 1, 2 is made up of all those pairs. So, I will just use a short form here. Uh, so, 1, 1 belongs to this, 1, 2 belongs to this, 2, 1 2, 3, in fact everything belongs to this 1, 3. Hmm. Then maybe I should have chosen a shorter example anyway R 1, 3 is equal to 1, 2, then again 1, 2 in the second row, so we do not need it again 2, 3, then 2, 1 and 1, 2. So, I hope you have got how we are getting this. Essentially R 2, 3 for example, we are simply taking this second column and the third column and uh, removing duplicates from there 1 2 2 2 1 3 3 1 3 2 okay so that's a projection network essentially now if you were to take the solutions of this projection network Uh, then we will find that the original relation that we wanted to express is possibly a subset. It could be equal to, but possibly a subset of the solution relation of rho essentially. So, what so maybe you should treat this as a small exercise. What is the solution for this? projection network that we have created, where these three relations are given to us and we want to find values that are this thing. So, for example, you will see uh, that uh, of course, these tuples will be part of the solution because by definition all these constraints are, uh, all these are represented in the in the projection network. So, for example, 1, 1, 2 is represented 
because you have 1 1 here and uh, 1 2 here and 1 2 in the third one. So, in fact, the, the first set of tuples in the three relations come from the first relation. So, likewise you will see that every row will be represented uh, uh, in the, this thing, but there are extra things which are not in the original solution which will also be represented. So, if you were to extend this you will see that you will get 1 1 this 1 1 comes from relation R 1 2 and then if you look at this third row here it is got 1 3. So, 1 3 now that is a wrong example here what are the values here. So, you need to actually sit and solve this essentially. So, 1 1 3 will not be present, but uh, I have to now look for a tuple which is present here, but not here. Now, this maybe this this is an example where uh, I think, but I will leave it to you as an exercise. Uh, this is an example where uh, the solution is equal to the original relation. But let me take show you another example where that is not the case. So, if your uh, x is equal to again x 1, x 2, x 3 and you have 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, 3 and 2, 2, 2. So, there are 4 uh, rows in this relation and if you do the uh, projection network for this, you will get R 1 2 is equal to 1 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 1 comma 2 2 because all 4 combinations are here R 1 3 is equal to 1 2 which is also there in the second row then 2 3 and then 2 2 and R 2 3 is equal to 1, 2, 2, 2 and 1, 3. Now, if you were to solve this, then the solution will be either equivalent to this, but it will add a new row to this and the new row is uh, uh, 2, 1, 2. So, this is the solution relation of this network that we used of the projection network of this row essentially. So, you can see that. So, so where does this 2, 1, 2 come from? This 2, 1, 2 comes, comes from the fact that 2, 1 is present in between x 1 and x 2, 1 2 is present between x 2 and x 3, 1 2 is here and 2 2 is present in between x 1 and x 3. So, this last row of my relation 2 1 2 is a solution of the given. So, what is this network? This is a binary projection network. of rho and what is rho? Rho was my thing which was in the red these 4 relations that is what I am trying to express as a binary constraint network. So, when I when I created the projection network using those 4 uh, rows I ended up with this binary constraint network which is R 1 2 R 1 3 R 2 3. When I solved that uh, binary constraint network its set of solution contains a fifth element which is this 2 1 2. Why does it contain it? Because it as you have marked in this blue lines here these every one of these 3 constraints is satisfied by this uh, uh, instantiation and therefore, it is a solution. So, what we have shown here is an example of the case where the projection network where the where rho is a strict subset of the projection network essentially. Hmm. 
So, if we, if we take any arbitrary energy relation in this case n is 3 and convert it into a BCN and then solve the BCN, you may get a relation which, which is a superset of the original relation essentially, hmm, which is expressed by this relation here essentially. But it has been shown that the projection network is the tightest or it is the minimal equivalent relation or network, which means you cannot get a network which is tighter than that essentially, which is which says that there does not a network R prime such that. So, remember I am saying there does not represent an R such that rho is a subset of the solutions of R prime and R prime is a subset of the projection network or the solutions of the projection network of the original row essentially. So, there is no there is no network which is tighter than the projection network which contains the original relation essentially. So, it is an it is an approximation it is an upper bound on 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 the original relation, but it is the smallest upper bound essentially. So, that is been shown uh, we will not go into the proofs here, but we will accept it as that and for a binary constraint network it turns out the projection network is minimal. which leads us to this thing which says that if you have it is a binary constraint network the minimal network which expresses the solution is equal to the projection network of rho. So, it is a tightest upper bound network that you can construct using a binary constraint network. So, this basically gives us an example of how you can approximate uh, any arbitrary relation with a binary constraint network essentially. So, we will use projection networks as we as we go along essentially. So, now uh, we will stop with the basic definitions here and move on to towards solving uh, CSPs and as I have mentioned earlier the basic idea of uh, solving a CSP is search based that you try different values for the different variables in such a manner that they respect the constraints that you are talking about and if necessary you backtrack essentially. But we have also mentioned and as we looked at some examples for example, the crypto arithmetic puzzle or the uh, Huffman close labeling uh, where you can do propagation essentially. So, we want to work towards uh, this idea of combining propagation and search and first we will look at this notion of how to construct tighter networks because tighter networks will have the advantage that the amount of search that you have to do is less. We will sort of expound upon this idea as we go along but we will we'll look at uh, the simplest notion of consistency uh, which is called arc consistency in the next class essentially.